It's time for City Beat, your source for all the latest news on the city of Thompson, only on 1029 CHTF, your radio station. Good morning and welcome to City Beat here on 102.9 CHTM. I'm Monica Gould and my guest today is Mayor Dennis Fenske. Welcome to the studio. Hi, Monica. Uh, let's use the, the first few minutes to start off with what's been going on in the city. Uh, well, recently at the uh, last council meeting, uh, there was a report from the Public Safety Committee in regards to the speed zones uh, around the school areas. And I can uh, convey to the general public that uh, a recommendation by Public Safety has been made to uh, change the hours for the enforcement uh, in front of the R.D. Parker uh, Collegiate only on Thompson Drive uh, from uh, um, 7 a.m to 7 p.m. So basically the speed zones will stay at 30 kilometers per hour in all school zones. Uh, around the elementary schools they will stay in effect uh, as they are now, um, 30 kilometers per hour, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Uh, in regarding the R.D. Parker uh, Thompson Drive area, that speed zone will again will stay at 30 kilometers, uh, but the recommendation and we would have to pass a, uh, a resolution to change the bylaw for uh, for the current bylaw, but uh, the recommendation public to, uh, from public safety to council, which will come at the next council meeting, uh, is that the speed zone uh, be in effect from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., uh, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Okay, uh, so when would this uh, take into effect if council were to pass it in the next meeting? Uh, the process is that uh, bylaw changes take effect uh, immediately, uh, but there is a, uh, a process in regards to the signage because the existing signage doesn't reflect or wouldn't reflect the existing bylaw. Um, so we would have to uh, have signs in place, and again, we can't we can't put the signs up or even order the signs until council actually approves it. Um, so until that signage is up, then uh, the existing bylaw would be in effect. And where do you stand, I guess, on the uh, issue on the change? Well, I, I support uh, the recommendation from Public Safety, and, and uh, we'll see where Council goes with it. Uh, I'll support uh, whatever direction Council uh, is looking for. Uh, I know that we had a, a large uh, response to our survey from the general public, I, and I think that the Public Safety Committee uh, listened to that, and you can see that in the reflection of their re recommendation, and I'm sure that uh, Council will consider those uh, uh, views voiced by the, the general public as well as they deliberate uh, the passage or amendment uh, of the existing bylaw. Okay. Now I just want to remind listeners that we will take your questions at 677-8181, or you can also email us at chtm at arcticradio.ca. Also during the council meeting, the uh, Manitoba Trappers Association wrote a letter to council asking for uh, funding to sort of help cover costs for the th Thompson Fur Tables. Uh, what will council be doing moving forward? Uh, actually, we received a letter from uh, from both the Chamber of Commerce uh, and the uh, Fur Table Association. Uh, this is a very important uh, um, um, event in our community. It, it generates around six hundred and fifty thousand dollars in uh, in sales and and uh, um, income influx into our community. A lot of the money is, is uh, spent in our community in buying supplies and, and other goods and services uh, from the City of Thompson. So it's a very important event and, and it's important that the City of Thompson uh, support. In the past we have uh, supported uh, by way of a joint venture with the uh, Chamber of Commerce and sponsoring coffee and that. But I, I think with this letter uh, it's been tabled uh, as part of the budget deliberations and budget discussions. So I'm sure there will be a, uh, a presentation coming from uh, the Chamber of Commerce and uh, the Fur Tables in regards to what's actually needed and required uh, for uh, this event to, uh, to continue in Thompson and uh, Council will consider those, uh, those requests and then uh, hopefully incorporate in the upcoming budget. Would you be able to say if there is potentially room in the city budget for funding? Well, I, I think it doesn't hurt to ask. There's always uh, there's always an open form in the sense of uh, uh, what uh, what is asked for in the uh, in the budgetary process. We will have public consultations. We just had a staff consultation this morning, so it never hurts to ask. At the end of the day, there is a budget that has to be passed uh, with the resources that we have, and uh, it will be put up against other other projects or, or costs that uh, that are in the budget as well. So uh, at the end of the day, there's no harm in asking and certainly if you don't ask you'll never have a chance uh, so uh, in encouraging people to put forth their ideas and their comments and then it goes through the, the normal budgetary process and at the end of the day we have to deliver a budget for the residents of this community and, and uh, we'll go from there. Right okay now uh, hometown hockey is three months away pretty exciting 
all eyes are going to be here on Thompson. We've talked about it already a few times, but can you kind of give us an update on how the planning process is going? This is a very exciting event for us, and, and for those who are, have been following it, there's 25 uh, communities across Canada that are being featured. In fact, this weekend, uh, Sudbury is be, being right. featured, so it's, it's uh, Sunday evening. Uh, in the community itself, for, for Thompson, March 6th, 7th, and 8th, uh, it will be a festival atmosphere on the Friday evening, Saturday, and then Sunday. Um, Ron McLean, who uh, hosts uh, Saturday Night uh, Hockey uh, in Canada with uh, with Don Cherry as well. Uh, he'll be arriving on Sunday morning uh, to our community and uh, we'll be uh, broadcasting the game between Calgary and Ottawa on Sunday evening. So we will be the base uh, support for that. There'll be uh, time before the game to, uh, uh, to basically um, show how what Thompson's all about uh, and also during the intermissions about the talking about the history of, of hockey in our community um, but also there's other events uh, they'll hopefully there will be some uh, NHLPA uh, former players up uh, to uh, to do some skates and sign some autographs um, Rogers has a, a very good program in regards to corporate sponsorship and there'll be other other opportunities to uh, to partake in in events uh, both electronic and hands-on uh, so it's, it's it'll be a festival for the weekend. Uh, right now we're just in the process of uh, pulling the committee together and, and working with Rogers uh, as to the expectations. Uh, we're really excited about it and uh, as you can see, if you watch this weekend uh, the feed out of Sudbury, that's an example of what will happen in Thompson. Right, and is, uh, so is it the city that's planning it? Is it the NHL that's planning it? How involved uh are we in planning the events for the weekend? Well, basically, it's a, it's a uh, corporate initiative by Rogers. Uh, so there are some guidelines and some basics that they, they have in, uh, in place that we can add to. But it's basically a Rogers hometown hockey program. Um, so we will uh, add to that program with a, with a community flavor. Uh, but basically, it's corporate driven. And we have some guidelines that we have, have to follow. But it, Rogers is really good to work with. They've got excellent people working with us. Uh, and so I'm expecting a really good event on that weekend. And uh, also, would you be able to say if residents will have a chance to volunteer, kind of help out with the event? Yes, that uh, that rollout will be coming in the near future in regards to uh, volunteers to work in the, the background. There's two or three uh, areas that we need to uh, to to firm up in regards to the Friday evening events, the, the Saturday during the day events, and the Sunday during the day pre, uh, the pregame events. Uh, there will also be a, a large uh, ask in regards to participa participation by the youth of our community on that specific weekend. Again, we want to put forward a, a great positive uh, face for our community nationally. It is national television that we'll be on. Yeah. And so uh, as we move forward, there'll be announcements uh, in regards to how people can get involved from a volunteer perspective and how people and, and the youth can be, get involved on the actual weekend itself. Okay, good stuff. And also now uh, residents, I know some residents have noticed uh, recycle and garbage, li garbage bins lying on streets uh, days after the area's garbage and recycle day. Uh, would you be able to comment on when residents are expected to remove bins and lids? Uh, basically, the, the, the bins, uh, the, the, the schedule, there is a garbage and recycle schedule. You can find it on our uh, webpage, thompson.ca. Uh, we ask residents uh, that uh, that you don't put your bins out before uh, 8 a.m. in the morning. Uh, we know that uh, people put them out the night before, and, and uh, uh, but we also ask that uh, you remove them on the day of your pickup. So uh, our pickup is usually done, uh, barring any mechanical failures or anything like that. Uh, the uh, pickups are usually done, completed on your cycle, uh, on your scheduled day. Uh, so by end of day, 4.30, 5 o'clock, uh, recycling and uh, garbage has been picked up. So we would ask you to re remove your bins and put them back in the place uh, uh, at the front of your house or garage or wherever you, wherever you storage them. But uh, basically, uh, we ask that they don't go out until the morning of, but we know that people put them out the night before. That's, that's okay. Uh, but please remove them on the same day you're, you're, uh, that you've received the service of recycling and, and garbage pickup uh, because as they can, be, can become a hazard. I've seen the wind blow them around and when they're empty uh, and tipped over and they can be, become a hazard on the roadway as well. Are there fines or any sort of enforcement for not following these time frames? Uh, there could be if it's if it's uh, excessive. I think it's basically an education process uh, where, where bylaw enforcement would, would just gently remind people, and I'm, I'm doing that right now, gently gently reminding people that it's in the best interest of everyone uh, to keep our community safe and this is one aspect of being a, a safe community is making sure that obstacles are uh, that could be uh, become traffic hazards because they are close to the roadways uh, are removed uh, on a timely manner. 
Okay, and then has the city noticed uh, any sort of leftover bins or containers affecting snow removal, for example, with the snow coming in? Uh, the odd the odd time it does, uh, but again, uh, they are light, uh, usually empty after the day of service, so uh, we can move them um, and move them out of the way, but it's not really a big hindrance. Uh, in regards to snow removal um, this time of year and as we go through the, the next number of months, the, the issue will be uh, will be automobiles and, and uh, vehicles on the streets. That's that's uh, We pre-sign a, a street that we're that we're going to clean and we would ask people to uh, move their vehicles uh, and in that case we're not as lenient in regards to educating people we do issue tickets that those who park on snow routes on snow removal days uh, where would people find out what uh, routes are the snow removal days so they know to remove uh, their car? The, air, the specific area is actually signed 24 hours before. So if, if for instance, I live on Goldeye, uh, it, if my sign, my street's going to be cleaned the night before, the day before, my street will be signed that uh, snow removal will be happening the next okay. day between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. So they have 24 hours notice uh, of that uh, to make sure that they don't park on the street during that time frame. Okay, good reminder. Now let's uh, use the last minutes for you to kind of go over on what's happening happening in the city this upcoming week? Uh, just a couple things that uh, from a safety, uh, safe operations perspective, uh, we have a number of water breaks happening in the community. Uh, we've had some large ones that uh, uh, Mr. Kaversky from Public Works advised me. We just completed one next to Twin Motors on Station Road and we've got uh, two or three other ones. So with water breaks comes obviously water on the streets and it freezes quite quickly so there's icy, ice and uh, slippery sections to be aware of that. There's equipment to be aware of as well. Uh, so. Uh, drive safe, drive the conditions of the road and be aware of large equipment around. The other aspect of it, it is the holiday season and there are lots of uh, holiday celebrations and socials and, and parties and things like that. So uh, just a reminder that, uh, that we do uh, have an operation in community called uh, Operation Red Nose. It's a great volunteer organization. Uh, you can call them at 778-81111 to register for pickup. Um, and uh, it's, it's a worthwhile cause and, and please, uh, it just reinforces the thought of uh, not drinking and driving. Plan your evening and uh, take advantage of the, the volunteer uh, volunteers that are helping out with Red Nose. Okay, great stuff. Uh, my thanks to Mayor Dennis Fenske for joining me here on this edition of City Beat. Uh, make sure to join us every Thursday morning around 11.30 for more on what's happening around Thompson and City Hall for 102.9 CHTM. I'm Monica Gould. City Beat.